If this shit didn't have stains on it, that'd be so wet. Oh! oh. <laughs> hey, I didn't see you there. It's only... <laughs> it's a little early. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome to the staff. My name is Fong. And I'm Nick, and today we are at the Rolls Bowl Flea Market. Use the ticket and the stamp to re-enter through that gate. Thank you! So my goal today is to find some t-shirt. But I don't know what I'm looking for, to be completely honest. Who wants this? <laughs> Been here for like 10 minutes and no, 20 minutes. Have, do you have any luck? No. You told me the price for a, for a shirt. And I was like, I didn't know what to think. Is because like I didn't want it. I didn't know if I should haggle with him. I'm intimidated. I'm intimidated. I know, bitch. So one of the biggest reasons like that it could be traced back to why thrifting kind of had a boom within streetwear. It's kind of traced back to the people like Sean Watherspoon or Jerry Lorenzo who kind of made these vintage tees like kind of pop. Like Sean Watherspoon has his round two store in LA and that kind of took off with, you know, his collaboration with Guess. There's a small tear too, so I would need to sew it. I don't know if, it's, I don't know if thrifting's exactly like a specific LA thing, but I do know that it's more so for these big fashion cities. So like LA, New York, Nicole McLaughlin really stated like, I listened to a podcast recently on Hype Radio because she does like all this experimental shit with like getting a bunch of like LL Bean Patagonia and she like repurposes them to like make these like weird ass sandals. I feel like um, Kit kind of did the same thing with their whole repurposes, you know, yeah. Um, where they would go to like the flea markets or whatever and find t-shirts and then print over them and sell them in stores, right? Wasn't, wasn't that a pretty big thing for a while too? Yeah, but like how do we really feel about, you know, these companies really just get a tee from here for maybe like 10 bucks, you slap your logo on it and you sell it for 60. That's true, it kind of all tied back to just the hype around Capitalism. <laughs> thrifting in general is really big in LA because people want to be kind of uh, environmentally conscious of but are we doing. are we actually being environmentally conscious or is that just a scapegoat I mean I, <laughs> it's, it's fast, you know what I mean fun fact flea markets are called flea markets because sometimes you might find fleas on your shit <laughs> I do <laughs> Um, so we've been here for about two hours. Two hours? Damn, fuck, wherever. <laughs> how hot it was. And, uh, how many things did you buy? <laughs> None. <laughs> this is my first time coming to this uh, Rose Bowl Flea Market, and, um, it's pretty hard to find something. So what, So what's your takeaway? My, my takeaway is, is that this? thrifting is not for me. In the end, I feel like we've seen a lot of people coming out with cards, and they're getting all these, like, nice, cool things. That, I don't know, maybe this is our first time doing this and we're not as comfortable. I found a lot of things that I do want, but then it's like, it's really hard for me to like, pay their asking price. But I don't know, maybe, maybe we're just not good at it. Maybe we're looking at the wrong places, but follow us in our journey as we figure how we can <laughs> improve. Learn how to put it. Yeah, but uh, thank you guys for tuning in. This is just part one of our thrifting experience. The Rose Bowl Flea Market is once a month. So we're gonna probably continue doing this throughout the whole summer. Um, it's gonna get hotter, it's gonna suck more, but maybe we'll get better at thrifting, who knows?